Today we're going to build a sideboard with live edge walnut drawer fronts. And this should be a little bit longer of a video because we're going to get into some detail. Alright, let's start with the cabinet, which is going to be made out of red oak. Now, obviously this is subjective, but in my opinion, red oak and walnut are not a good color combination. But I went with red oak for a couple of reasons. First, it's relatively inexpensive. But more importantly, for my purposes, even though I don't like the color that much, it has really nice figuring, or grain. And since I'm going to be dyeing it black with India ink, that's really the only characteristic of the wood that's going to show through in the end. So in these shots, what I'm doing is determining how wide I'm going to be able to rip each board to, and then cross-cutting them to get what I'll need and remove any of the checked or cracking material that's on the ends. Here in this shot, I'm very creepily winking at you, and also checking my boards to see if and which way they might be bending. And once I determine that, I can pass them over the joiner, keeping the concave side face down until I've got one face that's nice and flat. Next, I'll pass each piece along the joiner on its edge and get one good edge. And after that, I can plane everything to its finished thickness. In this case, I was starting with 5 quarter inch material, and I'm going to be planing it down to just a little bit thicker than 3 quarters of an inch. The last thing to do before I glued up my panels was to rip everything to its finished width. Now this is just a preference thing, but I always like to do this in two passes. First I take a heavy cut, where I leave the piece about an eighth of an inch wider than it needs to be, and then I adjust my fence and take a really light pass to finalize it.
After I'd cut one perfectly perpendicular edge on each panel, I measured and marked out the finished length that I would need. And I should mention that you absolutely don't need a sliding table saw attachment to do this. It does make it easier, but you could certainly use a regular cross-cut sled, or a track saw, or even a square and a circular saw, like you see me doing in this shot. For the smaller side panels and the vertical partitions, I just use the fence on my table saw to cut them to a consistent length. Okay, so with all of our pieces cut to size, the last thing that we need to do before we can assemble is cut in some joinery. So in this drawing you can see the top and bottom panels are going to get a 3 quarter inch rabbit on each end and a pair of stopped dados that are also 3 quarters of an inch wide or as wide as the panels are thick anyway. I'm going to stop them about three quarters of an inch shy of the front of the cabinet so that eventually the drawers can go in each cubby and the drawer can be inset around the perimeter and overlaid on these vertical partitions. The only other thing that we have to cut in is going to be a half inch rabbit along the backs of the top and bottom and the side pieces and that's going to hold a half inch back panel. To make the cuts, my initial idea was to use a dado stack. So here I'm getting it all ready to go, and while I was measuring everything out and realizing that it would be much easier to make the stopped dados with a router, I had a change of heart and decided to just use a router for everything.
So at this point, my case is completely glued up, sturdy, and probably good to go. But I was thinking long term, and with the drawers being opened and closed potentially thousands of times, and coupling that with the fact that I want to maintain nice looking gaps between the drawer faces for the life of the piece, made me reconsider and I decided to reinforce the panels to help protect against any kind of lateral play. So after I marked out my screw locations, I countersunk three at each joint and then came back and filled them in with a plug. On the side panels, just to show something different I suppose, I used some 3 8 inch dowel to help reinforce everything. The next thing to do was make drawer boxes for each cubby. So if you look at these two shots, you can see that the cubbies are slightly different sizes. The two on the sides are about 18 and 7 eighths of an inch, while the center cubby is about 1 16th of an inch narrower. So I'm actually going to build one of the boxes a 16th narrower than the other two. The hardware would probably allow for that margin of error, but I figured why chance it. So I'm going to be using side mounted slides, which call for half of an inch of clearance on either side. So my drawer box needs to be 1 inch narrower than the opening. So basically I'm going to be building two boxes that are 17 and 7 eighths of an inch wide and one box that's 17 and 13 sixteenths of an inch wide. And yes, fine. Okay, I admit it. The metric system is probably better. Are you happy rest of the world? Excluding Liberia and Myanmar? Okay, so to actually make the drawer boxes, I'm going to be using half inch Baltic birch plywood. And while I'm breaking down all of my material, let's take a second to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So if you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Probably the most notable thing that I've used Skillshare for was learning Premiere Pro, the editing software that I'm using right now. They have really in-depth courses, we're talking like multi-chapter, several hours longs, that can take you from knowing nothing at all to being a legit editor if you stick with it. And if that's not your thing, they've got thousands of other options to help fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career. So right now Skillshare is giving away a free two month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box. And after that, it's only about $10 a month. So click the link, claim your offer and get learning. Well, after you finish the video. All right, let's get back to it. To assemble the boxes, I'm going to be using pocket hole screws and glue. And this will make for a really strong and easy to assemble box. And I've said it before, but I'm just not into making this part of the build any more difficult than this. If it was for a customer who specifically requested something different, or if I got enjoyment out of doing it another way, that could be a different story, but for me, this works. For the bottoms, I'm going to attach them with some nails, and then I'll come back with a couple screws after it's all dry. To 
install my boxes, I'm going to make a mark where I want the bottom of the cabinet portion of the hardware to lie. Then I'm going to cut out a piece of plywood that I'll rest the hardware on while I install it. So that way each slide is going to be installed at the exact same height. The only other thing that I need to pay attention to here is that the hardware should be flush with the front of my vertical partitions, but recessed three quarters of an inch on the sides. Okay, let's move away from the cabinet for a bit and start working on the base. And actually, let's talk about the design for a minute before we start anything. So my original idea was to do something like this. Basically, something nice and simple to let the drawer fronts be the star of the show. But before I started building anything, I started having concerns about weight. At first I had thought to just screw into the vertical parts of the leg and let that carry the bulk of the load. But since this is made out of hardwood, I'd have to worry about expansion and contraction throughout the year. So then I thought to use expansion washers. But they would have been visible, and anyway, I moved away from that idea. Next I thought that maybe this part would be strong enough that it could carry the entire load. So I actually made a little test piece to see how strong it would be. Now I definitely weigh more than this cabinet does, and I'm putting all of my weight in one little spot as opposed to distribute it across the entire length. So I feel pretty confident that I could make this work. But I went back to my drawings and played around a little more just because I wasn't totally sold yet. So next I drew these three base ideas. This one's just a thinner version of this one. And I didn't like the inset base as much, so that left me with these two. And eventually I decided that I favored this one for the purposes of this piece. So I was looking at my two ideas, and I felt like I was trying to make this original idea work, even though I more naturally favor this style of base. It kind of felt like I was doing it just to go against my natural inclinations. And that just kind of seemed goofy, so I went with this style. So here I've marked up some eight quarter material to figure out where my pieces would be coming from. And then I went back to the joiner and planer to mill it all up. And I'm shooting for a finished thickness of right around an inch and a half. And once I have that, I can cross cut my pieces to their rough lengths and then rip everything to two inches wide. With our pieces roughed out, the next thing to do was cut our four tapered legs. Now I want this piece to taper from one inch at the bottom to two inches here. And I want the leg to be 15 inches tall with a flat spot that's two inches at the top. So rather than trying to nail that taper perfectly, I'm actually gonna cut it on a piece that's 16 inches long. That way I can find where the taper ends, measure up two inches, and then make a cut so that that's the top of the leg. Once it was all marked up, I used that piece on my tapering jig to get everything locked down, and then I could cut out my four identical pieces. Mm -hmm. 
And here, as I said before, I'm finalizing the length of the leg and leaving that two inch long flat spot at the top. And that's what my apron's gonna join to. And let's move on to those now. So here I'm marking the underside of the cabinet using my legs at each corner. Then I can use those marks to transfer the length that I need to cut my aprons to onto the aprons themselves. And I should mention that I did this independently for each apron piece, even though in theory they should each need to be the exact same length. To join them, I'm going to use two dominoes at each corner. And once I had the front and the back leg sub-assemblies done, then I used the same technique to dial in the short aprons. And then I could glue the whole thing together. After that was dry, I put a chamfer along the top edge of the entire base. And that was to create a visual separation between the top and the bottom. And you can see here in this shot that I got a little tear out on one end, but that's okay because I'm also gonna chamfer up the leg and that would have been removed anyway. And you can actually see that detail in this shot here where I'm mortising in some desktop fasteners that we'll use down the road to connect the base to the top. And before we get any further, this is actually a good chance to go ahead and sand everything that's going to be hard to get to later. And we'll put a little India ink on the base as well right now. Okay, the next thing that we need to work on, and what's probably the main focal point of this piece, is the walnut drawer fronts. So here I'm measuring and cutting out a chunk of walnut that's a few inches longer than what we'll ultimately need. Then I'm going to take the piece over to the joiner and get one edge nice and smooth. And then referencing that edge, I'm going to make another cut on my sliding table so that I know it's perfectly 90 degrees to my jointed edge. Next, I'm going to flip my cabinet upside down and partially fit the drawer using these little spacer pieces that I ripped to right around an eighth of an inch thick. And then, based off of this mark, I can cross cut this piece once more so that it's just the right size. Now this next part I could have skipped if I had a piece of walnut with a live edge on it, but I don't, so I'm going to attempt to make one of my own. So first I drew in some guidelines that I could follow as I cut. Then I used my jigsaw to cut away the bulk of the material, and then to get the final shape of the edge and to give it a much more organic look, I came back with an angle grinder. After I was happy with the rough shape, I used a sander and ultimately hand sanded to give it a good feel. 
And that's important because this is where people are going to grab the drawers to open them. The next step was to cut this single piece into three individual drawer fronts. So here I'm marking where I need to cut and making some marks to help keep things in order. Then over at my table saw, I cross cut each piece where I'd marked it out. And this worked out perfectly because the size of the kerf is the same as those spacers that I'd made. So everything fit just right and they perfectly accounted for the removed material. So the curves or the fake live edge matched up really nicely. To attach the left and the right drawer fronts, I used a little CA glue to temporarily attach them. And then I could pull them out, get some clamps on them, and attach them with a few screws that go through the drawer box and into the back side of the front drawer. For the center drawer, I pulled everything out and used my spacers and some clamps to get everything looking just right, and then again attached it with a few screws. Okay, so we're on the home stretch at this point. But before I moved on with any more assembly, this was a good time to get everything sanded, stained, and finished. So while I'm doing that, let's take a second to thank the other sponsor for this video, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for almost two years now. I recommend it to people all the time, both here and in my personal life, and I haven't heard one person complain yet. And I think the reason for that is because it's just drop dead simple and the outcomes look awesome. For example, to make space for this piece in my house that I'm working on in this video, I need to sell off one of my older pieces. So here I'm quickly making an auction page with some pictures, the information, and a form people can fill out if they're interested in bidding on the piece. When they do, I'll get an email, and that's that. The entire thing took less than five minutes to create. So whatever it is you're looking to do, Squarespace can help you do it. And best of all, right now, you can start a free trial by visiting squarespace.com slash four eyes and save 10% off your first purchase when you use the offer code four eyes at checkout. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you have an existing one, you owe it to yourself to at least give them a look. All right, thanks Squarespace. So I'd say that this piece is definitely a departure for me, at least aesthetically. Not a huge one, but just enough to feel like it's not quite me. Or maybe just not quite me yet, if that makes sense. And that's not to say that I don't like it or I'm not happy with it. I do and I am. Like I said earlier, I'm even replacing one of my most favorite pieces, Bad Larry, with this. But if I'm being totally honest, in a vacuum, if I'd never seen either piece before, and you showed me this one and Bad Larry side by side, I'd probably drift towards Larry 10 out of 10 times. I guess it's kind of like a cheeseburger. I love cheeseburgers. They're great. They've got meat and cheese and bread and vegetables. You can put bacon on them. But if I look at a cheeseburger every day and I've rubbed my hand over it a thousand times, and I open and close its drawers every day when I grab my camera equipment, I don't know, eventually, maybe I want spaghetti. Special thanks to Tony Bauman, Jordan Lawson, Keith Moran, Mitch Foreman, Mark Thompson, Kimberly Urich, David Connell, David Anglin, and the rest of my Patreon members for keeping spaghetti on my plate. No, but seriously. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing if it weren't for you, 
So in all sincerity and all food analogies aside, thank you for everything. And if you want to check out my Patreon page as well and see if it's right for you, just click on the link in the description. And as always, no pressure. Right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.